kings and queens what's happening it's your bro king blitz checking in one time for the one time welcome back to the kingdom today we got some more time segura this is uh buying weed used to be insane oh okay i mean i could imagine uh, you know the day is we living in a different time still ain't legal here in georgia though but we as a nation we have been traumatized by these horrific laws and people being imprisoned for having weed and it highlights the absurdity of not only it having been illegal and so crazy for so many years, but also highlights how the next generation will not believe our stories about it at all. <laughs> <laughs> There's a 0% chance they mm. will understand what we're talking about. It'd be like trying to tell a kid now, like, uh, hey, you know, pigeons used to deliver messages to people. <laughs> what the fuck are you saying right now? <laughs> It'll be the same thing. Now that you said that out loud, I wonder... Is that true to any degree? I'm going to sit my son down one day and be like, you know, when I was your age uh, to get weed, I almost died. <laughs> and he'll be like, why? Was 7-Eleven on fire or something? 7-Eleven. <laughs> they didn't sell it at 7-Eleven. Daddy used to get in cars with strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going? Chill out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> three hour round trips to buy weed bro for real it was it was the most nerve-wracking press it's, it's the most nerve-wracking process ever you know if you don't got no usual guy you got to meet up with a guy and you know of course you got to get in a in a car you know they're gonna probably pull off to you know a little a side street or whatever the case you know let you do do what they got it bro it, it, the anxiety level who and if you're like, oh, what kind of weight were you moving? Uh, $20 worth of marijuana. <laughs> that kind of major shit. Yo. I bought weed from a dude in a standalone trailer one time. Not a trailer park. A solo trailer. <laughs> the most terrifying housing situation that yes. exists. Yes. Like where other trailer people were like, get the fuck out of here. They kick him out. <laughs> I just walk up to that shit, 15. And this dude's like, you trying to get a sack? I was like, oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> he goes, we could go do that. I was like, all right, cool. And he goes, we just need to go get it. I was like, you don't fucking have it? <laughs> Isn't that your sole responsibility? <laughs> right. So I tried to play cool. I was like, all right, let's go get it. He goes, Not only that, bro, you can't tell your, your weed man that you want away, bro. You can, you can call him and tell him, yo, I'm trying to get a 20 sack or whatever. You pull up, he's going to open the door. First of all, he's going to open the door 10 minutes after you knocked or told him that you was there. Then he's going to ask you, what was you trying to get? And then he's going to go back upstairs for another 20, bro. He goes, I'll go get it. You stay here and watch my place. And I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man, no. And he goes, there's a 357 and a shotgun on my bed. Anybody comes in here, blast them. Oh, no. Inside? Paralysis. <laughs> but what I said was, that's what's up. Like, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, nah, bro. And then he stopped at the door and he goes, but don't shoot my mom. I go, can we get a description before we <laughs> How about a height and weight on old mom? Oh, man. Not everybody agrees on weed. That's fine. I don't care. Like, my parents, you know, we don't agree. They're not cool with weed. I don't care. They're old. I still love them. <laughs> My dad's a Vietnam vet. You know, some of them are, are cool with weed. Some of them are not. Some of them don't want to talk about Vietnam. My dad does. <laughs> some vets are like, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. And my dad's like, what do you want to know? <laughs> Here's what I wanted to know when I was a kid. It's terrible to ask a stranger this, but it was my own father. And, you know, I'd seen a lot of movies. So I'm like, you're in the war. Did you kill anybody? Uh -oh. The first time I asked him that, he goes, no, I didn't. I go, all right, okay. A few years later, I asked him again, did you ever kill anybody? He goes, it wasn't like that. I was a lieutenant. I was in charge of people. It just didn't work like that. I said, okay. And then a few years later, I asked him again. I go, did you ever kill anybody? And he goes, I threw grenades into bunkers. <laughs> I go, were there people in there? He goes, there were. Yeah. <laughs> little pieces by the time I got in there. Oh, man. And then last year, I go, did you ever kill anybody? And he goes, there's no better feeling than killing the enemy. <laughs> oh, man. Whoa. Oh. I, 
can remember the first time we ever talked about weed because it was Christmas Day. That's why it stood out. Yeah, my mama uh, found out I started smoking weed because uh, the laws let her know. I was hot boxing in, a, um, in an apartment complex like a dummy with two girls and uh, next thing you know, it was it, we was in a dark area too. And it, you know, next thing you know, whoop! Your boy was uh, mom. I was twelve years old. I think my sister brought it up. She was like, "I want to smoke weed," and <laughs> my dad goes, "You want to know what I think of marijuana?" And I was genuinely curious. I go, "What, dad?" He goes, "I was at a party one time and somebody pulled out a marijuana cigarette, uh -oh. and I said, I'm out of here." <laughs> And I was like, cool story, nerd. You got any other ones? <laughs> right. And he goes, well, yeah, one time I was in Vietnam and some Viet Cong tried to sell my Marines marijuana. So I found him, I picked him up by his throat and I threw him on the ground and I put my M16 in his face and I said, if you ever come here again, I'll fucking kill you. And I go, do you have any stories in between those two stories? <laughs> Jesus, it's Christmas, bro. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's Christmas, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Two years after that, there was a woodpecker fucking up our house. <laughs> this will all make sense. And <laughs> woodpeckers can really damage your house. I remember my dad paid a guy $500 to patch up that part of the house. A month later, the woodpecker returned. This time, my dad did not call the guy. He woke me up, his teenage son, on a Saturday morning. Picture you're dead asleep, and my dad whispering in your ear with his potent dad breath. <laughs> <laughs> he just whispers in my ear, dead asleep. He goes, I need you to shoot a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I just go, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, figure it out. Oh, no. So I said, okay, Lieutenant. And I got <laughs> an air rifle. I shot the woodpecker. I remember I shot it mid-peck, so it was going like... Hum, 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 hum. <laughs> <laughs> Landed in front of me, so much bigger up close. Really big, red feathers, distinct features. I was blown away. I bagged it up, I threw it away, and then I went over to my girlfriend's house. I started telling her family about it over lunch. Oh. I should mention, at the time, my girlfriend's family ran a wildlife conservation center. Oh, ah, yeah. Recipe for disaster. So, <laughs> I didn't know my audience, but <laughs> I heard a few forks drop, and I look up, and her dad goes, oh my God, you killed a long-billed woodpecker. That's an endangered species. Oh. And I go, oh. <laughs> I said, my dad made me do it. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he goes, how does that make you feel, knowing that you did that? And I said, there's no better feeling than killing the enemy. <laughs> awesome. I loved it. <laughs> Those birds are extinct now. I did that shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> ah, I'm crazy. Oh, so, Bruh. You know, all the animal rights people about to cancel him for that. Man, we all got, I ain't gonna say we all, but I would like to think that we we got a good majority of people with some weed stories, bro. We buying weed, oh my God. Like, like four years ago, bro, it was, it's like vintage in terms of purchasing some weed, dog. Like, we had to go through leaps and bounds of anxiety. But the feeling you felt when you made it to the house and you had your Rello or your, your paper or your wrap, whatever one, whatever one works was a it was a it felt like you was in the olympics <laughs> you knew you was doing something you weren't supposed to be doing uh though but yeah man it felt like you was uh you know uh you had some competition on the other side waiting to uh, lock you up Anyhow, home thank y'all for coming to kick it in the kingdom if it is your first time i know it won't be your last if you made it to the end of this video thank you please smash that like button though on your way out that would truly be appreciated you know